So uh, this judge did not seem like he was happy about Trump's statements out of court about Michael Cohen, for example. He seemed to be begging the defense lawyers to give him a reason why he should not find Trump violated the gag order. I don't know why he hasn't ruled yet, but you tell me, Dave, doesn't look good for Donald Trump here. It seems to me like he's about to be found in violation. Yeah, Megan, good to be back with you and Mike. I think the worst part was where the judge told the lawyer, uh, Mr. Blanche, for Trump that you're starting to lose credibility with the court. That's never a good thing when you're a defendant and you hear that your lawyer is losing credibility with the judge. Uh, but ultimately, I don't think Trump is going to get a big penalty here at the beginning. I think he'll just get the fine. It'll be graduated over time. And then maybe at some point, if this continues, he'll get something more serious. But in that sense, I do think he's being treated differently than others. I can tell you as a prosecutor, Megan, if someone else acted like this, they would be wearing steel bracelets by now. But, you know, the judge is very aware that Trump is running for president and he is Trump. He's going to let Trump be Trump. And so although the judge is seemingly very annoyed right now, I don't think that this is going to result in anything more, at least for now, than a fine. Uh, the judge said to Team Trump, Todd Blanche is Trump's lawyer, you're losing all credibility with the court. This is citing from The New York Times uh, when Blanche insisted that they, meaning Trump and his staff, are trying to follow the rules. He said you're losing all credibility with me. Uh, he also said he wants to hear an assertion under oath that Donald Trump believed he was not violating the gag order when he made some of the posts they were discussing. Um, that doesn't sound good, Mike. That sound, I don't, I doubt they're going to get such an assertion from Donald Trump. Todd Blanche was saying, look, this gag order, we're trying to comply with it, but Trump has a group of folks who work for him. They find articles that they think Trump's audience should read and some of those articles may have criticisms of witnesses like Michael Cohen, and that shouldn't be held against Trump, I suppose, is the, is the line of argument. So this Democrat Manhattan Judge Juan Mershon questioned Trump's lawyer's credibility. Let's look at Judge Mershon and this court's credibility on this case. You have this Soros-funded Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, who campaigned on getting Trump. He brought these bogus charges against Trump that are at best campaign, uh, that are at best bookkeeping violations. They're not even bookkeeping misdemeanors, but at best they're bookkeeping misdemeanors from 2017 that are clearly time barred beyond the statute of limitations. This case was brought after Matthew Colangelo got deployed from the Biden Justice Department, the number three office in the Biden Justice Department, a top political appointee who worked for you know, Eric Holder and Tom Perez and Obama and Democrat attorney general in New York and Biden and Merrick Garland. He gets deployed to the Alvin Bragg's office to resurrect this zombie case 30 months later after Trump left office. This is clearly election interference. It's clearly lawfare. It's part of the Democrats organized campaign there before this Democrat Manhattan judge Juan Rashawn, who donated to Biden in 2020. He donated to another anti Trump cause. And more importantly, his adult daughter, Lauren Mashon, is a top Democrat campaign operative, and she's raised nearly a hundred million dollars off of her father's unprecedented criminal trial of a former and likely future president of the United States. That is a clear conflict of interest under New York law requiring Jun Judge Mershon's recusal. That's not just Mike Davis saying that. That is a former uh, Clinton federal judge in the Southern District of New York going on Caitlin Collins' show on CNN on April 5th and stunning Caitlin by saying that. This Judge Mershon has not recused. His actual response okay. has been to put, put an unconstitutional gag order on Trump. Okay, but that doesn't... <laughs> I, I appreciate the sentiment, but we, like, let's stay specific for today because our audience has heard these more sweeping uh, arguments before. And I do think it's very interesting whether this, this judge is going to punish Trump for violating the gag order because you really are gagging a presidential candidate from speaking publicly about the witnesses who are out there about him all the time. So I get the unfairness of it. I'll stay with you on this, Mike. I get that it's unfair, right? That, that Cohen can go on MSNBC every day and say the most despicable things about Trump possible. But for now, the order, the gag order says Trump is not allowed to respond. And so what do you think this judge is going to do? Because it does appear to me, 
Trump's violated the letter of the gag order by attacking Cohen. Um, but what now what position is this judge in? Because he's either going to fine him or he's going to throw him in jail. I don't think we're yet at point B. Well, the problem is, is that this judge play, put in place an unconstitutional gag order. It is not constitutional to broadly gag a criminal defendant like this. If there's anyone in America who must have the first, sixth, and 14th Amendment right, rights to speak out against the judge, the prosecutor, the witnesses, the staff, the biases, the process, it is a criminal defendant. It's going through a criminal process, particularly when that criminal defendant is a presidential candidate, and particularly when that presidential candidate is on the receiving end of obvious Democrat lawfare and election interference. So, I, so yes, this Judge Mershon could say, yes, we're going to put President Trump in jail. I actually dare him to do that because I actually I think that will guarantee that President Trump is back in the White House. I know. I, I mean, I think he knows that, Dave, right? He, Judge Mershon is not oblivious to the fact that if he actually put this defendant in jail for violating this gag order, it would it would cause a meltdown in the country. Yeah, agreed. That's why they're just going to do $1,000 per each violation. That's even what Bragg asked for, didn't ask to sentence uh, Trump to pretrial incarceration. So they're not there yet, but he, he does need to cool down on the attacks, especially on the jury. You know, the, the, you had at least one member of the jury, the alternate came to the judge and said in tears that not sure if he wants to continue. Um, one member of the jury pleaded to get let off and, and she did. So it is a problem. And you have, you know, jurors who are there doing their civic duty and they're getting uh, accused of being 95% Democratic as, as far as Manhattan being Democratic and being like plants for the Democrats. You got to calm down on that. And as far as attacking Michael Cohen, you know, he can't engage in witness intimidation. I know it seems unfair that Cohen can attack him. And I know prosecutors are probably cringing at the fact that Cohen is still going after Trump online. That's not a good look. It's not good for the prosecution. But our system is that if you engage in witness intimidation and harassment, that's a violation. That's against the law. And at some point, Trump needs to dial that back. It's not a good look for him. And he could get hit with bigger things than just a fine if he continues in the future. Michael Cohen was all over um, MSNBC, I think just within the past few days, calling Trump despicable. He wants to see him convicted. I mean, all of this is terrible for the DA's case because he's going to be a witness at trial and he's going to get cross-examined with all those statements. Like, you'll say anything. You can't stand him. He's become your nemesis in life. You'll do anything to see him go to jail, just like you did, sir. Isn't that true? Like, this is terrible, but Michael, Co Michael Cohen wants his name in lights and to see his face on television more than he wants to preserve whatever is left of the integrity in this trial. So, I mean, in a way, it's not bad for Trump to have Cohen out there saying all this stuff, but I can see how it's very difficult for him not to respond. Did you know Fast Growing Trees is the biggest online nursery in the U.S. with more than 10,000 different kinds of plants and over 2 million happy customers? And now you can grow lemon, avocado, olive, or fig trees they have house plants too, how fun. Fast growing trees make it easy. They make it easy to order online and ship directly to your door in one to two days. You can even speak to their specialists for a free consultation. You can find the perfect fit for your specific climate, location, and needs. Whether you're looking to add some privacy, shade, or natural beauty to your yard, Fast Growing Trees is ready to help you make the right selection from their nursery. Right now, they have some of the best deals online, like up to half off on select plants and more. Viewers get an additional 15% off when using the code MEGAN at checkout. That's an additional 15% off your order at fastgrowingtrees.com. Use the code MEGAN at checkout, M-E-G-Y-N. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com, code MEGAN. This offer won't last forever. Tell them I sent you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.